Hello, hello, here they come. Hi guys. Everybody's muted whenever they first come in. Feel free to unmute yourself while we wait for Chris Waters to descend from the cloud and uh, come share knowledge with us. Would love to chat with y'all. Who's having a, a, a reasonably good Thursday? Cool. Teresa's on the phone, she's booking an appointment, so I think she's having a good day. Let's see. We're supposed to have about a hundred people in today. So I'm gonna to try to get everybody in uh, now. I'll see a lot of y'all are connecting to audio. <clears throat> Roman, how's it going? Hey guys, good, good, how are you? Hey, good. Um, I don't know if any of y'all follow Roman on Facebook, but he's uh, knocking it out of the park doing a, a video update series for his database who are watching. Most of them are lurking. There's a few people who raised their hand, but most folks are just uh, gonna kind of soak it up and he's taking advantage of the opportunity by getting stuck in anxiety and whatnot, but instead like thinking very strategically about how do I scoop up audience while we're in kind of this weird little moment here. So you got some uh, good feedback so far, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I had um, I think uh, 400 and something, four, 430 views. Uh, 28 or 30 something comments. I mean, a lot of actually a lot of outside agents, uh, they, they personally reached out to me and they're like, oh my God, this is such a great information. Um, and you know what the funny thing is, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in my own world. I'm in my own zone. The same thing, my, my team members, like we're all, we have something to do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we're all like running, but the rest of the agents out there, I mean, they're panicking and so many agents reached out. They're like, "Oh my God, thank God!" You know, some some positive feedback. Some so yeah. it was it was kind of it felt good. And and sometimes you don't realize how the rest of the people feel until you do something like that and you see that you know people are panicking. But just yeah. like you said, it's a good opportunity for us to scoop in and and take advantage of it. You know, as a, as someone who's growing a team, think about this from all angles. You know, you have. Uh, future home buyers, you have future home sellers that are uh, watching, some of whom are commenting, some of whom are messaging you saying, hey, what do I think the market's gonna do? Uh, but you've also got this other vector, which is you've got agents who are uh, watching what you're doing as well, probably with the intention to emulate that, but also you know, you're priming them for maybe a month or two from now after they've seen four or five, six of these, and then you call and say, Hey, listen, I'm growing my team. You know, I've got too many leads. You've seen what I can do. We should talk. Like there's a huge opportunity for recruiting as well. Fantastic. Love it. Okay. Everybody, we're going to go on mute while we await uh, Chris Waters. Anybody have a, um, let's see, we've got Monica coming in. Doug's coming in. We're supposed to have like a hundred plus people. So it could take a while to get everybody in there. Teresa, I'm going to pick on you. Teresa's my buddy in the Western, uh, Western, Houston suburbs, send her your referrals. Um, Teresa, tell me, you'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, how have you been taking advantage of this opportunity that's created by kind of this little situation that we're in? Well, one of the things I've been doing is using social media. You know, I've been actually doing some videos as well, uh, just on what's going on and what I'm seeing because it's not what I'm hearing everywhere else tell me more um well we've got buyers and sellers i put a new buyer under contract last week i got three new listings this week i mean things are happening it's that the mindset i think of some of the agents they're thinking nothing's happening i'm seeing large teams basically on vacation and not doing anything so it's kind of you've got a captive audience and i've got a lot of people reaching out to me that i've talked to before that are saying hey let's sell my house I love it. It's like a vacuum of leadership, right? You know, they're, they're, what Chris is going to talk to you guys about today is what do you, what happens if you don't take advantage of this opportunity? And what happens if you become one of those agents who gets sucked into kind of the collective anxiety of the thing and sort of the, the, the you know, we always talk about like, uh, you've heard since you were forever about uh, the fight or flight response. It's not really fight or flight. It's fight, flight or freeze. And so many people are in that freeze response that's sort of like they're sheltering themselves, like going into turtle mode. If you do that thing and you get sucked into 
um, taking your foot off of the gas, like what you're describing. So some of the best teams around you have their agents sort of like hanging loose while this thing shakes out. Uh, there's an opportunity for our uh, aggressive agents to come along and steal your clients. And Chris is going to talk to you guys about how to avoid that. Hey, Chris, how's it going? What's up, guys? Um, we are like, we have 125 people who are registering, who registered, and they're coming in. I'm having to like pull them out of the waiting room right now. So yeah, it was really start slow. Talking, but I had a hard time getting on. So. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, Zoom's having some, Zoom is, I don't know that Zoom was totally prepared for the situation. Well, their, their, their stock price was prepared. Zoom, yeah. <laughs> Zoom stock is skyrocketing. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's crazy, right? We should have seen that coming, you know, should have thought about that 30 days. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of the topic of the discussion today is what are the, what are the things that um, will make sure you're, you're well positioned so that your competition isn't staying one step ahead of you and building brand awareness in front of your personal database and stealing potential prospects out of your out of your database how many um how many uh we're gonna we probably need to wait like 60 more seconds I yeah they're still coming in we got a lot of people trying to log in right now um my when i tried to log in like i couldn't get in because i guess there's just so many people trying to get on right now i see carl bishop what's up carl I see carson how you doing man Hey man, that was a um, really fun time to like have fun with Zoom and do. I like doing the fake freeze where I'm just talking. Who else? Troy Copeland? Yeah, you, like that. Yeah. Um, and you can have a, fun with this. Yeah. I see a lot of familiar faces on here. Teresa's here. Charles was in town this week, right? Weren't you here? Why did I think you were in Austin this week? Somebody else. No, but uh, I'm down. I'm down. Come on, we'll hang out like you know, six feet apart. We'll be responsible, but we'll distance. All right, guys. Okay. So we'll, we're going to get going in like in like maybe thirty seconds. And Let's everybody go on mute. Let's everybody go on mute so we can uh, get started here. Everybody go. We'll, on. we'll um we'll record this so that people can get an email for all those that are going to probably show up late. All of us high D's out there, we just uh, we don't know how to show up on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm guilty as charged. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen, Brad. Oops, cool. Cool. Go for it. I just did something to my slide deck that put these little crosshairs in it, but eh, whatever. Um, okay, here we go. Cool. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Don't don't mind my hat. All right. I usually look more professional, but I've got a uh, I've got an afro, <laughs> an afro going on right now, and I'm con really considering buzzing my hair. Um, okay, so there's a lot of changes happening in the market right now. If you've been logging into these webinars the last couple of weeks, then you know we've talked about a lot of tactical things that we've been testing with our group in Austin since mid-March in order to stay ahead of the curve. So let me go ahead and hit present here. Um, cool. Okay. So what kind of, uh, has anybody, maybe chime in on the chat box for me. Has anybody had uh, something happen to them where one of their, somebody in their sphere of influence, somebody they know that you've got a great relationship with, calls you up and they just, and they call and say, hey, I just bought a house, I'm throwing a party, you should come by. Has anybody ever had that happen to them? And you were like, you are, you know, I can't speak for you guys, but I am pissed. I'm like, WTF, you know what I do for a living. How did you not reach out to me to help you with the purchase of a house or the sale of your house? Come on now. How many people has that happened to? Let's look at the chat box. 
Me? Yep. It happened to all of us. Man, that's, that sucks. It's the worst thing ever. So yeah, I think you guys have all heard this before. Out of adversity comes opportunity. Benjamin Franklin says this. A lot of people have had little annotations off this. But, um, you know, there, there are things happening right now in the market that um, some agents are taking advantage of and helping them gain market share. And they are indirectly able to build brand awareness with your personal sphere of influence and differentiate themselves. Okay, I am back in action here. Let's see. Brad, we got a couple of people we need to mute. Can you handle that for me? So, so, so the thing is, is like, you know, our goal as agents is okay. we've got to maintain top of mind awareness. And so Desks. I'm, I'm, I want to make Desks. sure because there are people out there in the industry and in your market that are like sharks and they're like, you know, testing and, you know, a lot of testing and failing, but they're, they are having some success and they're going to build top of mind awareness during this unique inflection point when the way we communicate with our database and our leads is changing. So let's expand on that. So I want to talk about two basic marketing, you know, marketing 101 fundamentals. And it's, it's the principles of brand equity versus direct response um, advertising. So brand equity building campaigns are, for example, this, this ad for Louis Vuitton. So brand equity building campaigns, the goal of a brand equity building campaign is to exude a feeling in the person that is seeing or hearing your, your message, right? So um, a, a lot of times brand equity is built around like, a, like in a magazine, for example, it's like lifestyle driven. An example of a brand equity building campaign would be you literally calling through your whole database and inviting them to, a, um, to an event, right? Like you're not asking them to buy or sell a house, you're just inviting them to an event and maybe you're, you're sponsoring it, right? Like that's a brand equity thing, you're creating a feeling for people. Um, does anybody watch the, um, uh, the, the um, Houston Astros and the um, final, final game of the World Series and hear about Mattress Mac? He, he put um, $7 million on the line for the World Series, Mattress Mac, and he ended up losing. Uh, Mattress Mac lost. And um, he, so he gave away $7 million in free furniture to people. And he, he has a furniture company based in Houston, Texas. And Mattress Mac is known for having these blowout sales. And so that is a perfect example of direct response. A, a direct response ad is you have an offer and you're trying to get somebody to respond instantaneously. So brand equity, you know, that takes time to, to develop over time and to embed in somebody's mind to create awareness. And a direct response ad is something that's trying to like very quickly get people um, to respond. So the question is in a time like today, when we've got coronavirus going on and we're trying to figure out like, how do we get, how do we get clients? How do we convert clients? The question is, you know, what, um, what, what gets results, right? What gets results from a, a messaging perspective? Now I showed you guys some examples of like print and a magazine, for example, but you know, brand equity or direct response comes in the form of every type of communication that's available out there. So you could, again, you could call somebody and your messaging could be in the form of brand equity, like inviting somebody to a party, for example, or to a client event or something like that. Um, or you could just call and ask them like, hey, I saw you were looking at this property online and you, and you favorited it. Would you like to go schedule it this weekend? Like that is a direct response. You made an offer and you're looking for an immediate action. So I want you guys to chime in on the chat box and I'd like to know what do you, what do you guys think um, is the appropriate action during a time of crisis from a messaging perspective, whether it's um, uh, brand equity or uh, direct response, what do you, what, and this is a trick question, by the way, um, what do you guys think is the right answer? And, ch and chime in, I'm gonna have to close out my box so I can see your, 
I can see your uh, your text here. All right, so we've got um, Doug says combination of both. Will says both. Carl Bishop says both. Carson Brand combination of both both. A lot of people saying both. I say both. Okay, cool. All right. Well, um, the truth is, it's uh, this sucks. I can't keep my Brad. What am I doing wrong? I can't keep my chat <laughs> my chat box open. And uh, uh, I don't know if you've got to like stop the. You're sharing your browser. You're not sharing your screen. I'm That's what it is. Yeah. So if you do stop share and then you go back to sharing, choose the screen instead of Chrome or Safari, whatever that is. All right, cool. Um, one second, everybody. A little technical. As y'all can tell, Brad's, Brad's like Spock and I'm Captain Kirk. I need someone much smarter than me to help me navigate the computer. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that we had to upgrade our Zoom account because we have way too many people, or not too many people, but like over the limit. And so when we upgraded our Zoom account, I have like all of these new buttons this morning. So we're going to learn together, C-Dubs. It's fine. I'm just going to keep my slide deck open. This looks a little less professional, but I, I, I need to be toggling between screens anyway. So you guys just bear with me because I think the information is good. So the question is, what, what's better during a time of crisis? And I, I told you this is a trick question. And the answer is, is neither. Neither is effective during a time of crisis. So in, in recent years, there has been this movement towards what is caused, uh, excuse me, what is called caused-based marketing, caused-based marketing. I'm trying to follow the chat box while I'm doing this. So, so um, cause-based marketing, this is probably one of my most favorite forms of communicating with somebody. And I put up an example here of um, a mattress company that was running an ad and it says, you know, if you buy a mattress through us, one mattress, we'll donate a year worth of clean water to a person um, in a third world country. And so this is a, this is a form of caused based marketing. And maybe some of you guys have noticed it's kind of gr been growing in popularity um, over the last several years, but there's never been a time that is more important than now to integrate cause-based marketing into every form of communication you have. So like whether you do, you know, uh, email, you know, you're on the phone with people, texting, uh, radio, TV, billboard, direct mail, whatever it is, like now is the time more so than ever before to leverage cause-based marketing. Um, I'll share a quick little study with you guys. Um, this was done by Duke University and they found, they, they did a bunch of um, case studies split testing different types of products. And so they tested uh, toothpaste and toothpaste that um, was associated with a cause showed it an increase of 28% for toothpaste. Uh, they did a, they also tested shampoo and shampoo that was associated with a cause uh, had a 74% increase in um, uh, being purchased when compared to the control shampoo. So the thing is, is obviously during um, coronavirus, more important than ever before to be coming from a, a place of like, uh, you know, caring for your community and for your fellow neighbors. And so this, I think there's a great opportunity that is uh, available right now to be able to integrate cause-based marketing into the, diff the different forms of communication uh, you use in your business to get clients. And so um, a lot of people ask me, or a common question I, I, I get from people is, you know, when do you get real leads? Like people that actually want to buy and sell. Like, you know, like, uh, so I, I've been testing this, by the way, this cause-based marketing um, for over a month now. And people have been asking me, you know, like, when do you actually get leads? Like, cool, I'll like, you know, send out a bunch of press releases and tell people I'm donating money to healthcare workers or buying masks or whatever. But like, when do I actually get results from that? Like I need clients now or in the very near future to be able to keep my pipeline going. And so the thing I want to remind everybody of is that real estate is largely life uh, changing event driven. So if you guys look at the, the, the macro study of uh, single family home sales, 
only 15% of homes that are sold are secondary, uh, secondary market type homes, um, vacation rental type homes, like, you know, th that's only an, an investment. That's only 15% of the entire single family um, world in the United States. The other 85% of homes sold and purchased are a result of life changing events. And so even though coronavirus is going on right now, you know, people are having life changing events happen to them. This was like, like super, you know, very um, coincidental. I, I got, a, uh, I got a, a text from a friend of mine and he's renting, he's renting a home and he has, two he has two sons and his wife's pregnant with a third boy on the way and the baby is due May 5th. And he literally just sent me a text saying, getting ready for the baby. Uh, he sent me this like 10 minutes ago and he says um, he's trending a couple weeks ahead. And so he's like, uh, uh, my, my friend's name is Ali. Uh, he, his apart, his uh, house, his lease is about to end. And like, he is also in only a three bedroom house with two other kids. Like they have to go and get a bigger house. And so like he's expediting his purchase of a home. So I want you guys to remember that. So there are opportunities out there to find buyer and seller leads and for, for you to leverage cost-based marketing to differentiate yourself and create that top of mind awareness and stay one step ahead of your competition. What most of the other agents are doing is very archaic. They're, you know, sending them properties for sale and ask them, you know, do you want to go take a look at this or whatever? Like they're not doing anything to really differentiate themselves and talk about how they're a caring citizen that cares about the community and giving back to not only their clients, but the other people around them. Um, so I want to talk about uh, just real quickly, some like cause based marketing examples. I think there's a really cool way you can integrate humor into this. Like imagine like sign writers on your listings that say like free toilet paper with home purchase, you know, like I think there's some really cool things you can do to integrate, um, you know, what's going on right now into your marketing and add humor. Uh, the other thing is I talked about this last week. So for those of you guys that aren't in our uh, coaching um, or if, if you weren't on the webinar last week, what we started testing in our group in Austin is um, donating masks. And I did a Facebook live with a radio station and um, we're, we're giving away masks to the community. And we got uh, our, uh, I, 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 I'll, I sh was anybody on the um, webinar last week? I did a little screen share and I showed the Facebook analytics. We got over 20,000 hits. So basically I created a, a message on our business page and I tagged the radio stations and the TV stations. And then I got to do a, an actual Facebook live with one of the news talk um, radio stations. And it got us like a tremendous number of, um, of leads. Our, um, inside sales agent Mark last week set seven listing appointments from this one Facebook post talking about what we were doing to give back to the community because we, we had a, we, we made a big shipment we or excuse me I ordered a big shipment of masks and I found somebody um, in Hong Kong China like a direct contact to the factory and I shared this last week I gave the contact information and I shared it publicly on here I don't know how many people are on here again from last week, so I don't want to repeat myself. So anyways, we got incredible, we had some amazing results. Literally, we set seven listing appointments last week from this Facebook Live and talking about the community and giving back masks to all the healthcare workers in our city. Um, so I'll talk later about that. If you guys have questions about who we're getting the masks from, whatever, I, I can answer that in a minute. I want to keep going down the slide. Um, so I want to continue talking about the different uh, methodologies to market and um, how to incorporate this cause-based marketing message into different forms of, of marketing. So I do believe um, there are some tactical things you should be doing to differentiate yourself. And, and I think there, there is a, a way to integrate into your messaging the cause-based the cause marketing. So for those of you guys that are in our coaching program or, or you were on the call last week, um, you know, I shared, I shared with everybody a text message we sent out to our database of buyers. And the message said something to the extent of like, hey, we're, we're gonna offer um, a virtual showing service and you can preview homes from the, from the comfort of your, home, your own home. You don't even have to leave your couch. And we had over 100 unique buyers schedule showings from this text, this text blast that we sent out. And so th I think there's some other cool things you can integrate in there. Like for example, telling people like, you know, you're, you're gonna donate $1,000 for every home sale for example, you'll donate $1,000 for every home sale. 
to healthcare workers. You know, that's like an exa another example of like how you can do the cause-based marketing and integrate it into your different forms of uh, messaging. Now, market snapshots. I want to talk about those for a minute. If if you are um, talking to a consumer on the phone and it's a, and it's somebody you know, maybe it's a seer, and they say they want to sell, um, they're thinking about selling their home. You know, first off, uh, one thing I want you to be mindful of is you got to be really careful with direct response. Like you can't go for the jugular and like go for the, try to go for the close and set the appointment. Um, if you're just like cold calling or reaching out to your sphere, you first got to make sure you're, you're asking about their family, how they're doing. And like, you know, make that like the important point to be bringing up. Like don't go for the close and try to, you know, hammer the appointment. Like first, like check in, see how they're doing, see how, ask them how you can help them and just come from a very servant's heart perspective. And then if they do express concerns about real estate or whatever, you know, if you are going to do something direct response related, I would encourage you to tell them like, you know, again, typically uh, market snapshots or like e-alerts, right, right? We typically set those up for buyers that are looking for homes for sale, but you can actually leverage this for um, your, your sphere and people in your database that are concerned about the market and it creates a win-win. You can provide value because they're concerned about their home's value during the pandemic. And you can tell them, I'll, I'll set up this search for you. So you see all of the housing inventory in your specific neighborhood. So this is kind of a hybrid way of like leveraging direct response um, messaging and also like cause base. Um, so that's a really cool one. Something really tactical I just wanted to share with you. This is kind of unrelated to like cause-based messaging, but you can integrate it into your messaging if you call expireds and withdrawns. Um, first off, we've been having a tremendous amount of success calling expireds and withdrawns. Our contact rates when we call expireds and withdrawns is through the roof. Like the number of people answering their phone is higher than ever before, both calling buyers and sellers. But we've been having a tremendous amount of success calling expireds and withdrawns. And um, again, this is another, another area where you can integrate the cause-based marketing of how you're you know, helping the community. Um, another little tactical thing I'll just share with you that's actually working um, is doubling down on your talk time using dialers. So I'm not traditionally like a big fan of like these speed dialers, but the thing is, is like talk times are through the roof. So like I'm a really big fan of dialers right now because everybody's answering their phone. And you don't have to worry about them basically like skipping your phone call. Um, uh, we talked about life event buyers already. Um, something else that's working really, really well for us is um, contacting accidental landlords. So what we're doing is we're going into the MLS and we're looking at properties that were leased out six to nine months ago. And the properties were leased out, but they were also simultaneously listed for sale six to nine months ago. And we're using a service called IV Data and we are it's, it's essentially a skip tracing service. We're, we're sending them a CSV file of all these properties that got leased out six to nine months ago that were previously owner occupied. And we're, we're literally um, getting, you know, these are, it's been scrubbed with the DNC list. So we're not like doing anything we're not supposed to. And we're literally calling these folks and saying, Hey, we noticed your property got leased out. You know, we've actually got a really cool um, uh, strategy to sell homes during the, the pandemic. And I don't know if you're having any concerns over the forbearance and you're worried about your your tenants not paying rent but we have some really cool strategies to move properties and if you give us the opportunity to sell your home we're going to donate a thousand dollars to healthcare workers here in our community would you be can we set an appointment either you know tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon to discuss further so anyways that's been working extremely well um calling accident a lot uh, uh landlords something else is um live streaming like that call to action. And I'm gonna give you some examples of what we've been doing about how to like, um, you know, like push that out to the world, like live streaming, if you will. Um, and then something else that's been working really well for us. And I, and I talked about this last week, but just for those of you guys that weren't on last week, we're talking about this again this week, is distressed seller digital campaigns. So <clears throat> I see a lot of people on here that's in our, that are in our uh, coaching, but um, these distressed seller campaigns we've been running on the digital side have been uh, crazy effective. You know, there's, you know, the bar and restaurant industry has just gotten almost completely wiped out and people are, you know, afraid that they're going to get foreclosed on. So anyways, um, you know, as, as um, agents, we serve, a, you know, we're like the conduit of helping people through a pretty, you know, challenging time. And um, there's a lot of people out there that are very fearful. And a lot of us on this call have the capability to, 
help ease a lot of the concern and fear people have by, you know, helping them, you know, like tap those people's brakes and be like, look, you don't have to like, you know, fire sale your house. Homes are still selling even during the pandemic. Most of the part of most of the United States, you know, real estate's considered an essential service and you can help, you know, walk these people um, as a servant leader to help them get the desired outcome and help them get the best outcome given the situation. So um, anyways, that's some like some new, random nuances about direct response marketing. So, something I want to share with you guys that has been working really well uh, in terms of like marketing to our database is hosting a virtual happy hour via Zoom. It's like we literally send an entire, um, you know, uh, mass email out to our database saying, hey, we're hosting a, a virtual happy hour with all of our clients, like plug in and let's catch up. Um, that's been working really well. We've also been doing that with our team. You know, that's kind of like a brand equity play. But here's the thing, like, although it's brand equity, you know, you're, you're, you're maintaining top of mind awareness, but like, you know, you're not gonna get immediate results from like money in your pocket, like the next, the following day. The thing you can do in those um, happy hours is communicate to the people in your sphere that are on the Zoom, like, hey guys, if y'all know somebody that's looking to buy or sell a home, we are going to give a thousand dollars to healthcare workers in our community, it, you know, when, when a home sells. So, you know, spread the word. We want to give back to the community and help everybody that's out there on the front lines, trying to help everybody that's, you know, helping us, you know, flatten the curve, if you will. Um, something else, again, uh, that's been really, really, really great and really effective for us is a webinar called The State of the Market. I shared this slide deck as a template with everybody last week. If there's anybody on here that um, did not see the template for this state of the market, I'll show you guys really quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on this because last week we had a lot of people watch this, but this was the slide deck right here that I shared. And so I was able to broadcast, I broadcasted this to um, buyers in our database, sellers in our database, our sphere. And then I also did this via Facebook live with a news talk radio station and it got tremendous results. Um, you can also um, record this and you can, you can send this to news reporters in your respective market. They're all dying to find um, people to interview via Zoom. And so for each of you in your respective markets, this is a really cool opportunity for you to get in front of the press. You can also talk about in your slide deck, at the very end of the slide deck, hey, if anybody buys a home through us, we're giving $1,000 to healthcare workers. So again, this, these are all examples of how to integrate the... Um, cause-based marketing messaging into all forms of communication when you're talking to buyers and sellers to differentiate yourself. Um, let me go back to my slide deck here. Okay. Um, so um, one other thing I want to talk to you about, and this all goes, you know, the whole theme of this is like how to keep you ahead of your competition so you're not accidentally losing out on somebody in your sphere or a buyer you've been working with, right? And so one thing I want to share with you guys is a bandit sign. So on the um, right-hand side, now you guys could make it look different, but you get the gist. Um, Brad made this very impromptu on, um, on Canva, but you know, you guys can contact like a, uh, you know, a print shop where you go and get bandit signs. But imagine putting these bandit signs in front of your listings and imagine having directional signs, right? That say virtual open house and they're all over the neighborhood. I don't know about you guys, but have y'all noticed like everybody is coming out of their, their, their house and like walking up and down the streets. Like I've seen more people in my neighborhood than ever before walking around and you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So like there's more foot traffic in the neighborhood. So like there's never been a better time to have a bunch of signs in a neighborhood. So um, the bandit sign I think is a really, really cool way to um, push the messaging about the live streaming thing. And again, when you actually live stream uh, showing a listing, you know, again, talk about the cause-based marketing, what you're doing for people to buy a house. Um, let me, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to the, does anybody have any questions? I wanna take a quick uh, break real quick for any messaging um, before I talk, talk anymore. Uh, where'd my chat box go? Brad, my chat box disappeared. Dang it. <laughs> uh, just hit the stop, uh, stop screen share for a second. I really hate Zoom right now. This doesn't want to cross. Yeah, Zoom's throwing us some curveballs for sure. Um, okay, okay, well, we so do have some. I wanna, I'm, I'm going to share my slide deck again for everybody so y'all can stay tuned. I just want to see if there's any questions. Um, uh, donations too. So Todd asked, how are you giving $1,000 to healthcare workers? Like, I mean, there's a lot of um, nonprofit organizations in your city. Just do some research. It, you'll, you'll find plenty, trust me. 
Um, Kathy, Kathy Vale. Oh my God, Kathy, great, great question. Kathy says, how do you vet real buyers requesting a virtual tour? Um, we offer the same, asking all the right questions prior to the virtual tour. After the tour, they admitted they are working with another realtor. So Kathy, man, you are going to be a lifesaver for a lot of people on this, um, on this uh, webinar right now. So Kathy, something we did was we took our buyer agency agreement and what we've been, and I shared this last week. So uh, I kind of wish every single person on here had been on last week because there's, if you're not on here every week, you're missing out on stuff. So anyways, last week, what I shared was the buyer agency agreement we use. And um, uh, Brad, could you maybe post like an image in the chat box, like a sample image of that? Of the blurb? Yeah, just like the, a little. Yeah, yeah it, give me blurb. two minutes to find it. Yeah, so basically what we did was um, we started sending our buyer agency agreement via DocuSign to people we had never met before, right? And like, it's kind of created a pretty cool opportunity because, you know, typically you don't get a buyer committed to working with you until you physically meet them, right? And so I'm going to load up my slide deck um, again. I don't know if I'm going to send slide decks. I want to make sure I got to all the questions. Uh, okay, cool. Um, Kathy, by the way, you like, you like win the prize for the best question today. Um, all right, let me load up my slide deck again and I want to finish answering this question. Share screen desktop share okay boom okay cool so i wanted to see if i can find um i'll share i'll share you guys share with you guys the um maybe i can find it the buyer agency thing uh hang on one second everybody here we go so this is this is what we broadcasted to our team about a month ago um we talked about a virtual showing and virtual listing program um and let me get into the nuances uh because i actually have the little uh thing that the austin team created that's the um the sheet itself you want me to share it really quickly the virtual uh, showing program yeah hang on one second so this is the text that we sent to our buyer database this is what started all we sent this to our buyer database and we got over 100 unique buyers requesting a showing like over 100 it was nuts um and then, yeah, Brad, go ahead and share your screen and show the contract. Okay, cool. So we basically started sending this document out to people about our virtual showing program, how we'll let you see three properties um, at no cost. And if you end up buying them, you know, the commission's paid for by the seller. And then um, Brad, can you keep scrolling down? And so then, you know, this is kind of our like buyer agency contract we get people to sign. Keep scrolling down, Brad. Sorry, that's our buyer agency oh. contract and it's inside okay. the franchise box, yeah. I can't, so. I can't show that, all right. So anyways, what we did was we basically created an addendum to our buyer agency agreement about our virtual showing. And sorry, Chris, no, we can't. Um, nothing, nothing personal, it's just it's a legal document and I don't wanna get this in trouble. So the, um, there's an addendum to the buyer agency agreement about a virtual showing program. And that's what Brad just showed you. So what I would encourage, what I would encourage um, everybody to do is take your buyer agency agreement and create an addendum for a virtual showing and have people sign the entire thing via DocuSign. So Kathy, if, if a consumer signs that via DocuSign, you're leveling up their, their level of intent, right? Like if they go through the trouble of like DocuSigning something, like a formal contract, it's going to like, you know, either they're going to jump off the bandwagon or they're going to go all in with you. Right. So like, that's like, this has actually been a really cool um, thing that we plan on doing moving forward is we plan on doing our buyer agency consultation via zoom long after the pandemic is over. And we plan on, um, we plan on, uh, doing it via Zoom and getting them to sign the buyer agency agreement and the virtual showing addendum way in advance to them even coming to our market. I don't know if you got, did y'all know that the average lead gets sold seven times? The average lead, it gets purchased by agents seven times. It's crazy, right? Seven times. Um, so anyways, uh, the goal is to try to get them committed to working with us before we even meet them in person. And we've, do, we've done this on the listing side successfully for years. 
And in the past two weeks, we've been successfully signing up people, doing it via um, Zoom and DocuSign. So it's, it's been working quite well. So anyways, um, let's go back to this slide deck. So the bandit signs, this is a great thing to plaster around neighborhoods where you have listings. Imagine a directional sign. Um, what we are doing is, and we don't have, we don't, uh, we're actually doing, we're testing this for the first time this weekend, but we're, we, um, we're buying the domain name, virtualshowingatx.com. And when they go to that domain name, they get pushed to Eventbrite. They get pushed to an Eventbrite, um, you know, uh, event to register for, um, for a, a, a live streaming open house. And in Eventbrite, we copy and paste the Zoom link for them to get on. And so that helps us, you know, generate a lead. And, um, you know, it, and, and then the Zoom is what we're using as the mechanism to show the property off with our cell phones. Um, another opportunity is uh, Facebook Messenger works really, really well for broadcasting a home tour. So if you wanna do a, a home tour with the consumer one-on-one, -on -one, um, Facebook Messenger has a video function and it's phone agnostic. So whether you have an Android and an iPhone, the Facebook Messenger video thing works really, really well. Now, something else everybody should be taking advantage of if, if you have listings is you should be um, going into the MLS and editing the property description. So the, what you wanna write in the property description to drive traffic to your, your live streaming open houses is this little blurb right here. Hashtag virtual open house, HTTP, you know, whatever the web address is at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. 421-2020. So by the way, this, this like little blurb right here, you put this in the property description MLS, you go update all the third party websites like realtor.com, Zillow, et cetera. Um, if, you're, if you like using Facebook Marketplace, go post a bunch of home ads on Facebook Marketplace and make the main image a picture of the house and then like in red text, tell them to go register to see the, the open house live streaming at 123mainstreet.com or whatever. And then when they go to that domain, it should forward them to the Eventbrite link to register for the live stream event. Okay, so that's how you set it up. Um, this has been working really, really well for us. And so this is probably one of the biggest little nuggets I can share with you guys around how agents in your community could potentially be stealing your clients. Um, because literally think about this, like this, this is going to create a big opportunity, especially for the listing agents to be able to, you know, swipe your buyers. Cause they, I mean, they know the listing better than anybody else. Right. So you got to be really careful. Like if, if you have listings, number one, you need to be doing this. And if you're primarily driven, if your business is driven as a buyer agent, you need to consider hosting open houses at other people's listings and then getting the listing agent to do this on your behalf and just tell them exactly what to do, right? Like update the property description, put this little tag of text in there, go on Zillow and all this stuff, update it. And then you guys get permission to go advertise the listing on Facebook marketplace to drive traffic to that live streamed open house. Um, so anyways, this is a really cool tactic. And it's also how I think a lot of people are going to swipe a lot of their competitors competition. One thing I, uh, a little quote I want to share with you guys is this is from Dan Kennedy. And, and Dan Kennedy always says, money flows to differences, not similarities. So if the, the common theme over the last 40 minutes of me talking, if, you have, if you've noticed, the common theme is like, how do you differentiate yourself from the competition and stay one step ahead of them? So the differentiation can largely come from integrating caused based marketing or caused based messaging into all things you do into all forms of communication, whether that's direct mail, email, radio, TV, billboard, digital, whatever it is like integrating cause based marketing into everything you're doing that will help differentiate yourself. And then, like I said, you, you also need to consider, you got to stay ahead of the curve. Like make sure you're pushing the messaging of live streaming showings. Make sure you're getting, you're getting people signed up and committed to working with you, sending out agreements via DocuSign, offering virtual showing. Um, update, you know, leverage the bandit signs. Get the property descriptions in the MLS to be reflective of how people can go and get access to the live, street, live, live streaming event. Um, leverage Eventbrite as kind of your lead capture page. It's Eventbrite's free. 
Um, so anyways, um, for most of you guys that don't know this, like we kind of treat, Brad and I treat our group in Austin. So Brad and I have a group in, um, in Austin and I'm gonna see if I can put my face back on here. So, so Brad and I treat our group in Austin kind of like an R&D lab. And so before we tell anybody to do anything, we um, we're always testing it first in Austin. And if it works, then we tell other people. And, and Brad and I also have 10 other expansion partners. So we've been sharing this, you know, doing testing this in Austin and then, you know, testing it with 10 of our expansion partners. And, um, you know, these things have been working like gangbusters for us. Like we, you know, our team has collectively just in Austin set um, 26 listing appointments last week alone, 26 listing points, one week. So like this shit works. This is not theory. Like all these little tactics I'm sharing with you, this is not theoretical BS. This is stuff that's like actually working for us. So I want to um, open it up for Q&A for about five minutes. Um, before opening up for Q&A, I want to share with everybody one quick thing on my screen. Um, let me, let me uh, go back to my screen share here. Good old trusty Zoom. All right. Um, all right, cool. Um, so one quick thing. So Brad and I are help like Brad and I are mass like massively discounting um, coaching to help people like through this pandemic. We're just doing it for the next three months. It's just like a, a limited time thing to um, work with people across the country. So if you want to uh, get involved in our weekly group uh, weekly group coaching that we're doing, where we're sharing like what we're doing like in our R and D lab and what's working and what's not. Um, just for context, our advertising budget in Austin, Texas is about a million dollars a year, right over a million bucks. So we, we split test a lot of stuff. Um, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, Brad and I are doing it for 399 bucks. And then if you sign up for um, uh, either one of these options, you're also going to get access to our uh, training that we do for our group in Austin. So that's inside sales, listing agent training, buyer conversion training. And our team leaders in Austin run this training and there's multiple trainings throughout the week just to help you get fundamentally better from a skills perspective with your agents. And then a, um, a portion of the proceeds are going to furloughed workers and going to buy masks um, for healthcare workers. I actually have a shipment um, coming here like this afternoon of a thousand masks from Hong Kong, China that we're going to be donating to um, the scene hospital network here in Austin. So, um, anyways, this is our way to give back to the community and um, do something really cool for people out there. But um, I'm going to take take this off um, off the screen here because I'm not really I don't want to hard sell this. Like, if you're interested, cool. If not, no biggie. Um, I think you guys will learn a lot. So um, I want to open it up for Q and A. What um, what questions do you guys have about anything I've I've shared today? And Kathy, by the way, your question was great. Um, yeah, you guys just unmute yourselves or uh, contribute in the chat box there. I got a message. Some uh, Mike Costanza said, um, I'm about to run 280 15 second uh, commercials, 10 a day, May 4th for 28 days, May 4th on Trust and City. Um, I don't know what kind of commercials you're running, Mike. Are you referencing TV? Um, I would have been running TV commercials in the month of April, not, not May, but eh, it'll still work in May. Um, TV does not work on cable, by the way. Like I tested, I spent like over $50,000 split testing cable TV. And I did a $50,000 test on cable and I did a $50,000 test on network TV and the network channel crushed it for me. And we've now spent over $600,000 on cable network TV just in the last um, two years, uh, half a million bucks. And like, it's freaking gangbusters, but there's a, there's a formula to doing it to make sure people aren't like DVR in your stuff. And, you know, and I actually tested 15 second commercials and they don't work. I would actually recommend 30 second commercials. Only do it dur during the news segments. People don't, re people don't DVR the news. So 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. news, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. news, and 10 p.m. news. 30 second commercials, especially when you're starting the campaign. And then you need to wait three, you gotta wait three, um, three months before you even measure your results. Um, so you need to have a lot of money and core capital if you're going to do TV. Like you need to set a lot of money aside for it to work. It does work though. Produces amazing ROI, typically like 6X ROI, but you can't measure that. Um, you won't get that 6X ROI until a minimum of 12 months. Uh, Mike Costanza says new, News 12 only. So the downside of like only picking like a, I don't know what News 12 is. If that's one of those like local news stations, I split tested that. 
and they just don't have a big enough audience. Um, did you send a copy of the meeting? I'm having internet connection problems and I'm missing out on a lot. Yeah, we'll send out a recording. So um, again, somebody asked about the skip tracing company. It's called um, IV Data, I-V-E-Y Data. If you wanna get like a scrub list of, for example, absentee owners that became accidental landlords. It's a great list of people to prospect. Um, that's a great question. Um, uh, so um, I got a text from Jesse. Jesse asked, is coaching one-on-one? -on -one? Um, so the $3.99 a month is one-on-one. -on -one. The $99 is a group coaching setting. And um, either way you go, we're also going to give you access to the um, uh, ongoing training. We, we basically opened up our training in Austin that we do for our internal team, which is focused on inside sales, setting appointments for buyers and sellers, objection handling. It's focused on the buyer consultation. So set, getting the buyer commitment signed. We've been doing a lot of it on like how to get people committed to working with you on Zoom and the objection handling component. And then also on the listing side, on the listing side, setting the appointment, like the messaging around the script and objection handling, and then the actual physical appointment. And we've been going through the actual Zoom meeting and the, the slide deck the presentation we use to get people committed. So that's ongoing every single um, week. Um, Kathy says, I am in the group coaching and love these guys smart. I've coached with many over 20 years. I love the forward, forward thinking and fast. Thank you, Kathy, I appreciate that. Um, cool, so yeah, so it's super cheap. We're only gonna do this for the next three months. Um, Brad and I's like big vision is like, we're just trying to, we our, our long-term goals, if I'm being selfish here, if y'all wanna know why we do all this stuff, like our selfish long-term goals are, we're looking to partner with people um, in a partnership capacity across the United States. So that's selfishly why we're giving out so much value. We're not trying to go build the next Tom Ferry or Mike, Mike Ferry coaching organization, but we do want to help people. And I think we can do it really inexpensively and we can kind of like, you know, open up the floodgates of everything we do internally for the masses. So, um, cool. Well, if anybody has any other questions, please let me know. Um, is anybody, uh, anybody interested in uh, signing up at 99 bucks a month or 399 a month? Just chime in on the chat. How many people are interested? Just a reminder, we're gonna donate um, uh, a portion of proceeds to furlough workers and healthcare workers. Um, specifically, we're gonna buy them like masks and we're also looking at gowns, buying gowns for people. There's a shortage of those, which is mind blowing to me. I don't know, you know, they need to hire more realtors in the hospital systems because I found some freaking masks and gowns. They need to get some dang realtors trying to help them buy some masks and gowns. I don't know why there's a shortage. Um, cool. So Jesse said he's interested. Um, T said he's interested. Awesome. Tom says yes. Deb said yes. Awesome. Um, okay. So Doug said he's game. Lucia said yes. Amanda Ponce. Is that Amanda Ponce in Austin, Texas? Is that the same Amanda Ponce? Yeah. Hey, welcome. If, I, if anybody wanted to get a jump on it, we literally have a session. We have our sessions on Thursdays for the group coaching. So at 3 p.m. Central today will be the next session. So if you wanted to rock and roll, you could actually get in today and we could uh, scramble and get you the links. So for everybody on here, Amanda Ponce is like, I don't, I wouldn't really call her competitors. She, you know, like we're all friendly here. She has a team in Austin and uh, Amanda Ponce is a badass. By herself, she sold over 80 houses like she's, 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 uh, well, I know you're building a team now, Amanda, but you were selling like 70 to 80 homes every year, like clockwork. Angie has kids, family, like you're, she's a super, she, Amanda is very impressive to say the least. Um, cool. So we have a lot of people saying the program's awesome. Um, so Adele on our team uh, just posted a link in the chat box and it says, if you're interested, you know, if you want to sign up, you can go to that page chriswaterscoaching.com, um, retool, opt-in. Uh, Brad just posted it again. You guys can sign up. It's 100 bucks or, um, or 400, depending on which direction you want to go. Um, I should my head there. Oh, wow. So Amanda, you sold 88 homes last year. That's impressive. That's amazing. Juanita was asking if the coaching's month to month, and the answer is yes. Hi, Juanita. Um, we are going to yeah, do this no definitely long, through no, July. No long-term um, commitments. Our, yeah, it's a short-term thing. Our, pl our plan is basically like for Brad and I to like help people across the country, like pretty much through the summer. And then like our group in Austin, all the internal training we offer, we're going to open that up and we'll give you guys uh, the link to the zoom meetings. Um, just for reference, uh, speaking about badass women, 
my, um, uh, we have this woman on our team in Austin. Her name is Kia Potter and she's our listing agent team leader. And prior to being a listing agent team leader, she was selling between 120 and 130 listings per year. So she runs the listing agent training on, is it Tuesdays, Brad? Yep, that's right. Tuesdays, 10 central. Yep. And then, so she runs it on Tuesdays. And then our operations team leader, um, I don't know, I, I guess I'll share this with everybody. Our, our, uh, our group in Austin um, is a Zillow offer broker partner. So we represent Zillow in the purchase and helping them sell their properties. And so our, our um, operations team lead who oversees the ZO program and also oversees our transaction coordinators, and all that staff, he runs a training session on Tuesday. His name's Vince Gonzalez. He's been with us for eight years now and he's overseen 3000 transactions. And so on those training calls on Tuesdays, he talks about how to leverage the iBuyers to your benefit, um, you know, as an agent, like how can you, you know, how you can actually make, take advantage of the iBuyers. Uh, there's a way to, to work with them and to take advantage of them. He does that on Tuesdays. And then um, Susanna Medrano, she's our buyer agent team leader um, and director of sales in Austin. She oversees three different sales managers. She's probably the biggest student of leadership I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and so another powerhouse woman, she, um, she runs it on, is that Thursdays, Brad? Uh, she's going to call on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Okay. So what, so what we try to do is we try to pack it all on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so you guys will get a zoom link to each of these training sessions. This is the stuff we do internally for our group in Austin, but it's applicable no matter where you are in the United States. Um, and then, uh, and then Brad and I do our one-on-one -on -one coaching thing. So anyways, it's a tremendous amount. I think, you guys will, your return on investment will be like a thousand X. It'll be unquantifiable. And if it's not, we'll just, I don't know, send us an email, we'll give you your money back. Um, so, all right, hope you guys enjoyed the session today. I don't see any other questions. Um, go click on that link. I think Adele will reach out to some of you guys that are interested in um, joining. Um, if anybody has any last minute questions, feel free to chime in there. I'll wait like another 60 seconds. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Thank you, Chris. Always helping help them with replaying more. For cool, y'all might see me with a shaved head next time. By the way, I'm thinking about just shaving it all off because I just I don't know what to do with my hair. It's so long. Um, cool. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, again, 99 bucks and or 3.99. Jesse Walter just signed up. Sweet. Cool. Awesome, Jesse. Is this the Jesse Walters and Colleen? Is this Jesse in Colleen, Texas? Yep, that's Colleen Jesse. Or Waco, Temple. Colleen. Temple Colleen. Colleen. Temple Colleen. Colleen. Okay. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm excited to connect with you guys. Um, stay tuned. Like it, it kind of it's kind of sucks because like every single week the content kind of builds, you know, on top of each other. So like if you don't, if you're not staying on, like things may not make sense. So hopefully, you know. If there's anybody on here that wants access to last week's stuff that we, we broadcasted, is it possible, Brad, for you or Adele to send that out to people? So You're talking about just the recruit the um, recording from last week? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just let okay. Adele know. Adele at wirsystems.com. I'll put it in the chat box. Okay, so if y'all so it'll make more sense if you watch last week's because it kind of builds on this week. Um, it'll it'll help connect the dots. Okay, cool. So Adele, her emails, uh, Adele's email is in the um, chat box. Adele at wirsystems.com. Jay Monkus, just signed up. Cool. Excited to work with you, Jay. Uh, you'll be getting an overwhelming number of Google Calendar event reminders from us with all the uh, coaching and training we're doing. Um, sweet. Jay's in Long Island. Awesome. Hope you're staying safe up there, Jay. I know, I know you're in the middle of the, um, in the middle of the crisis. You're, you're under, you're hiding under the bed. <laughs> you're hiding under the bed. That's good. Um, cool. All right. Thank you guys again. I appreciate everybody uh, jumping in. We'll get those um, links sent out. Adele will be reaching out to you again if you want to get last week's. Um, webinar and slide deck, just ping Adele at wrsystems.com. And um, the link is in that chat box if you guys want to sign up and get started with us. And uh, yeah, so look forward to connecting with you guys uh, in the next session.
Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.